Hi, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington T-Touch practitioner for animals and people. And this is Tristan, who's a corgi. He's sleepy. There he is. And this is an episode of Conversations with a Corgi. We might be on number 70. I'm not sure. Anyway, it's pretty exciting. <laughs> Today, we're going to continue our talk about wraps for people. Um, and this one is, looks a little complicated, but really, you can do it a couple of different ways, and it ends up not being as hard as it looks. Right, Bess? He says, I don't know. We're not wrapping me today. So this wrap is called the crossing guard wrap, and it looks exactly like what it says it is. It's, uh, boy, it's light today. It's dark out because it's sunny and shady at the same time. Um, it looks exactly like what a crossing guard would wear. It's got an X across your chest and across your back, and then it goes around your waist. It's a really good one, again, for riders, and there's a couple of variations on it. And it's, I have to say, for me, it's too much wrap. So I don't use this one very much, but a lot of people, in fact, a lot of my riding students have really loved this wrap. So it is super useful. Um, and I'm using two different colored wraps, of course, in this bigger size. Well, that's not true. I have four different colors. I only have a couple of colors, I was going to say. but um, So I'm using a purple one and a blue one. And Tristan, we went over to our friend's house yesterday, and sure enough, he had lilacs still in bloom. And so he let me take a bunch home and some bleeding hearts, which I've never picked before. I um, had pruners with me, so I snipped some up and brought them home. And... Lo and behold, again, last night, this is the continuing saga, two or three in the morning, I felt something crawling on my shoulder, and I'm like, no, it's just the blanket, it can't be anything else, I haven't been in my yard, Tristan's been peeing in the driveway on some stones, because I don't want him near the grass, and yes, I felt around, it was a little thing, I picked it up, ran to the bathroom, turned on 16 lights, and it was, again, a tick, and it took me a while um, I did not fall back to sleep for a long time, so I'm pretty peaked today. But it took me a while to figure out how I got it. Yesterday, Tristan and I boldly took a walk in our neighborhood. We just went right up the yellow line of a side street here where we used to walk a lot. I haven't been walking for like three weeks, and I'm getting fat from not walking. And my, my uh, step count is down by like 60% because I'm not taking my walks and it's been raining and we've just had like a million reasons to not be able to walk except when we were at the beach. So I decided last night we'd walk up the hill and we did and we came back down but literally stayed in the middle of the road. I didn't let Tristan near the sides of the road. So I'm freaking out at night thinking the ticks are falling out of the trees and it was a different kind of tick than the ones I've been finding. So I was very upset. And then somewhere around 5.30 a.m., I realized that, in fact, the tick probably got on my arm um, when I was cutting some of the lilacs at my friend's house. And that was a little bit more reassuring. However, my friend has had Lyme disease, so <laughs> I was a little more freaked out and thought I have to make sure there's no ticks on my body anywhere, anyhow, because I don't think I would do very well if I had Lyme disease, and most people don't, let's face it. Um, it's a pretty devastating disease. And I don't want Tristan to get it either, and he did have a scamper at my friend's house, but their lawn is chemically treated and kept very short, so um, as much as I minded the chemicals on the lawn, I felt like Tristan deserved a little chance to run around. So he did. And he seems tick-free. We might have to spray him up with some different things today. I'm thinking about putting peppermint. Um, I, have a, I have a vegetable garden that has some herbs in it, and I bought one allegedly chocolate mint. It's just plain peppermint plant two or three years ago, and it has taken over the garden. I have had to beat it back, pull it up. I mean, the spearmint, which I love, is hardly standing a chance against this peppermint, and I have been ripping it out for the last couple of years, but now uh, mint really repels a lot of critters. Snakes don't like it. Nothing really likes it. Mice. So as much as there's been some oregano planted out on the side yard where Tristan goes, which is 99% rocks. It's just a two foot, like 20 foot by two foot strip of grass in the side yard. Um, as much as he goes out there, he still is getting like a tick every single time, no matter what I put on him. 
but I think the peppermint will stop them. So I think when I'm brave enough to go in the yard and face the ticks, uh, I will rip up a lot of it because I have bucket loads and plant it along the fence on that side yard. Um, the planting is the part where I'll be nervous because of the ticks. So I don't know if I'll be wearing a diving suit or what, but I am thinking the peppermint is the way to go because ticks really hate it. So of course this year they're so abundant and robust. I don't even know if a uh, DEET will kill them. It's really, they're really a problem. So that was my saga of my not sleeping and I feel pretty wretched this morning as a result of it. So we will try the crossing guard wrap and hopefully it will restore me to balance. So with the crossing guard wrap, it's a really good one for your overall posture and it releases tension in your neck, back and shoulders. And it uh, improves your awareness of the relationship between your neck, back and shoulders. It really helps you um, feel a connection from your low back to your upper back and your mid back and helps you keep a proper postural alignment. It also releases tension patterns and holding patterns in your back and neck, which a lot of people have, let's face it. And it's very useful uh, for proprioception, as I said, and it gives you kind of a light containment um, and it does increase your body awareness. A lot of people like to use this when they're riding. As I said, I've had lots of riding students really like this because they feel like um, when you're on a horse and you've got a pop proper postural alignment, the horse feels light and your center of gravity is more easily uh, over the center of gravity of the horse. So wearing wraps when you're riding is a really good way to see how effective they really are because your horse will move differently instantly when the wrap starts to work to change you. So um, I, I think riding is one of the ways that wraps are super useful. So let's just try to put this on. You're going to throw it over your shoulder, the middle of one wrap and you want that to be coming diagonally down behind you. Oh, between my hair and the mic cord. This is an exciting toss. There. And I don't know if you'll be able to see this whole thing um, because you can't really see my waist. But anyway, you get that going so that it goes over your shoulder and pretty far down your front. Now I've pre-attached with my safety pin, my second wrap. So you bring the tail here around your front. You take the second wrap, continue around your back and around your corgi. <laughs> and around your front and then throw it over your other shoulder. And then bring it back around and attach it in the front to your original wrap. So I have to say, as much as it looks complicated to get this on, it's kind of instinctive once you start unrolling your wrap to go in this direction knowing that you are going to have across in the front and the back when you're done. So you can see I've got, and you could, to make this super easy, you could throw one wrap over one shoulder and one wrap over the other and have somebody help you just run them around your waist. So we're crossed in the front. And then I'll try to stand up a little. You can see we come down and then around the waist in the back. And here's the back view. Tristan has immediately sat in my spot. <laughs> Come on up, buddy. <laughs> uh, so it's the crossing guard wrap. And I have to say, it's actually feeling pretty good like this. Now we have a couple of variations. For me, my left shoulder is super sore today. And I have this super loose. And make sure when you do this that it is loose over your shoulders. Because a lot of people have shoulder problems. And if it's too tight, it'll start to hurt. Um, even though it's pretty loose pressure, it's still, if you have issues in your shoulders, this might not be comfortable. So it's important when you put this on to keep it loose. The other option you have, which is a popular fashion statement now as well, is to bring it off the shoulders a little bit, right across the point of shoulder, which is here. Now, ideally, 
people do like to put the waist part of this wrap down really low, like below your belly button. And I have to say, that little support on the low back is really helping me. I feel my pelvis shifting and all the muscle spasms in my left shoulder are actually sort of releasing a little bit. I get a lot of spasms like right under my left scapula, um, which is the wing, the chicken wing on the back of you. And uh, this wrap is just sort of gently doing exactly what um, it's supposed to do. It's releasing tension patterns in the shoulders, neck, and back and pelvis. So it is a great wrap in that it does affect many parts of your body at once. And I have to say, I prefer the off the shoulders, although I don't prefer, prefer that fashion statement. <laughs> I like how this feels on my shoulders this morning because they are so tight. I was definitely uh, having a hard time sleeping, grinding my teeth and shifting my weight around in my bed and searching every nook and cranny of my bed. Thank God I used white sheets to see if there was another bug, but no more ticks. And then Tristan stopped dead on the staircase this morning and started scratching relentlessly at his ear, but he doesn't have a tick either. He just has an old sore spot there. Yes. So I can feel this wrap still. It's still adjusting my spine. Um, it's interesting to me as a physical therapist to see the effect of these wraps if you have them on for a few minutes. Like I literally feel my spine you know, lining up one vertebrae on top of the other, going from the bottom to the top of my spine, from this wrap being down lower. I have it below my belly button in the front, and it's quite loose, I have to say, around my waist, but it's just enough. So the point is that the wrap doesn't have to be super tight to have an effect. It just has to give you that feedback um, to make you change how you're standing or sitting. It really is about awareness. It's not really about strapping your shoulders back. I know that some of my riders, um, they're so excited when I ask if I can put a wrap on them because they, riders are constantly being yelled at about their posture. So you get somebody who's 40 years old and has been riding their whole life. They've had lots of people yelling at them about their posture. So when you say, I have something to help your posture, they're like, whatever it is, do it. Um, and often their posture isn't really that bad. They just don't have an alignment. Their head's forward, or they're leaning forward from their hips because their saddle's too small, or they're leaning behind the motion of the horse. So it doesn't take much to help that person just find their center of balance, their center of gravity, and to get their spine lined up over their pelvis and their hips and their heels when they're sitting in the saddle. And often I take their legs out of the stirrups um, when I first put the wrap on the person. So um, a lot of them want the wrap really tight is what I was going to say, because they want to be strapped into that posture that they haven't been able to achieve all these years people have been yelling at them. And it's so simple. Good posture is literally effortless. Your structure is designed so that the structure holds you in correct posture. You don't need to have a lot of muscular effort to be in proper posture. And that is the secret to good riding, to be effortless in your body, you know, not doing things. It's about not doing anything to follow the movement of the horse. And it is so hard to learn that in our culture in particular, and certainly some others, because we are um, taught to, to do, to like, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna fix this? How am I gonna work with this? And it's really about letting go, just like many lessons in life. It's letting go of your holding. Don't squeeze your knees when you ride, because if you do that right now, just sitting here, you'll feel that your breath will be held and you're, you'll start to not be able to move your pelvis as much. And when I was a little kid riding hunt seat, you know, it was all squeeze with your knees. And what that does over time, the leg, as your legs get stronger, it pops you up out of the saddle and forward and you pretty much are not riding your horse anymore. You're just uh, sitting in the air. Um, riding without stirrups for hours and hours and hours will teach you how to find your balance because you will fall off if you don't have your balance in alignment, your posture in alignment. And, uh, you know, thank God for Sally Swift because I had so many lessons with her and we did so much riding with our eyes closed with someone leading our horse and, you know, doing different things uh, incorrectly to find out what the correct feels like and just really exaggerating being ahead of your horse, being behind your horse, leaning to one side, leaning to the other side, you know, doing anything that could help you 
not be correct when you're riding. That a lot of people do. A lot of us ride like that, only not so exaggerated. It's much more subtle, and I definitely tended to sit on one hip. And I'll never forget one clinic where I was. She took a glove <laughs> and put it under my right hip. Was it my right hip? Yeah, she did. She put it under my right hip to try to level my pelvis so that my feet would hang evenly in the stirrups. And um, it worked somewhat, but what really worked was getting better body work for myself to normalize my leg length and riding without stirrups for the first few walks around the ring and letting my horse have a big swinging walk to loosen my pelvis muscles up and allow that right leg to drop down. So I um, and I think using a wrap when you're doing that would just be even more um, helpful. And of course, as a dressage rider and a jumper rider, I spend hours wrapping up my horse's legs. So for me to throw a couple of wraps on myself before I set off on a ride would not take too much effort. And this one, I have to say, as much as it looks a little complicated, if you have the pin done, the first pin, before you even get on your horse, um, I would be able to get this on me while I was on my horse. And my horses, of course, are not shying at things and running away and are able to stand while I get on and off of them without moving. So um, it would be safe, but you might have to have somebody hold your horse or else put this on before you get on. And the other thing, just in case you're wondering, if you have wraps like this and you want to try them on your horse, you can do it with a jacket on and a down vest and every other kind of outerwear, raincoat that you might have on. The wrap will work through your layers of clothes and it's really um, super helpful. Like this one with it particularly off my shoulders is really helping. I think the support um, on the bottom of my shoulders here, like around my shoulders, is helping to bring them back in a way that having the pressure on the top where it's really sore would not have been as effective. And I have to say, I like the lower back part of this when I moved it down below my belly button in the front. Um, it just, as your shoulders are coming into alignment with your body from wearing this, I feel my pelvis shifting a little bit to allow my shoulders to be straight in line with my hips. And that is a super helpful thing when you're riding a horse or, you know, just walking around your house. Um, and that's another thing. If you have a dog that's been pulling and you finally have a good harness and he's no longer pulling, you might still walk with a stiff posture with your dog. So just walking around the house like this while you're holding your leash could help you um, re-educate your own body about how to walk with a dog who's now walking differently than he was when you first started watching all of these um, pro broadcast. Oh, Tristan's sleepy. And in fact, last night, since we hadn't walked literally in two or three weeks, when we went up our hill, which used to be a short little quick walk for us when we didn't have time to do a lot of walking, I'd use the hill because it is quite a lot of muscular effort. It's a very steep hill and I figured a short hill walk is better than a long flat walk some days. And I have to say, oh, I could feel the tension in my shoulders going up and down that hill because I was just so determined to do it and to be really vigilant about keeping him in the middle of the road. And since it was twilight, um, I think we went around seven, I had to be super careful for the bears and the bobcat, not bobcat, um, yeah, it is the bobcat that we have around here. Is that right? Yeah, I'm thinking of cougars, yeah, it's a bobcat. It's a big furry kitty and they are really bold. They are not shy, so it makes me really nervous about what happens in California with cougars because, or mountain lions, because, boy, if they're anything like their little cousins, the bobcat, <laughs> they are bold. I mean, even a coyote looks at me and then takes off, and the foxes are pretty wary, but um, they're so funny. They always have themselves ready to run at the same time they're checking you out carefully, so I love them. And in fact, one of our corgi friends posted two fox cubs playing in her yard somewhere. Um, and then she said she was concerned because she didn't know where mama was. And I was just about to type, oh, they go away for hours a day. You'll see her. When I saw a picture that she had next posted of mama coming home to feed the kids after her day out hunting, her evening out hunting. So um, foxes are pretty acclimated to people, but they definitely keep their distance from us as much as they can. And I know that some of my neighbors have seen a moose in my side yard. Um, we're in western Massachusetts, and moose are pretty rare in this area. I mean, there's a few. There might be some in uh, New Hampshire and Vermont coming through from Maine that are coming into our yard. 
but really this one moose he's been here I think uh, since I've moved in I've seen him just a little bit of him once and I saw one moose when I was riding my horse and as many people might not realize moose are really dangerous they are far more dangerous than a bear they get really angry easily and they are prone to attacking even a horse so Luckily, the moose I saw didn't have huge antlers, and when I was looking at a picture of a moose the other day, I thought, my God, those antlers are so big for them to hold on their head. How on earth can you not have a headache carrying around antlers the size of what, I mean, a moose is a big animal with a big head and a big skull, but still, those antlers are enormous. I mean, I'd be mad too if I had to carry around those antlers. So I had to be super wary of the wildlife we might find on the trail. And I did hear something in the bushes that made a funny noise, but I think it was squirrels or something. I don't know, but I didn't see any large wildlife. Did you, Tris? You heard something. Oh, you look at your teeth. You have little bits of your turkey stuck in your teeth this morning. So I'm still feeling more comfortable with this wrap. Um, it is tending to slide up my shoulders, which I don't like, but keeping it around the point of shoulder here is quite comfortable. So again, this is called the crossing guard wrap. It crosses in the front, it goes around your waist, it crosses in the back, and it's pretty easy to apply. You just need two wraps to do it. And you know, as you can see, I was able to manage to get it on me myself without someone to help me. Um, and it's in the old days before we had better ways to do this, like putting it starting it on one shoulder, I used to just throw one over my shoulder and throw one over my other shoulder and then go around my waist with them. But people forget which direction they're going and that can sometimes be complicated. So starting with it on one shoulder, the middle of one wrap on one shoulder, just bring it down, attach the other wrap, go around your back, come up over the other shoulder and it's pretty self-explanatory once you get that far. Hi Pat, hi Linda. People are saying hi to you, Biscuit. <laughs> he still smells like coconut and is clean and fluffy from his bath. Uh-oh, what's that? Let's say it's not a tick. No, it isn't a tick. It's another spot where he had a tick. Oh, poor little guy. I feel sorry for us, Biscuit. The ticks here are so bad. I don't know. We can't go outside anymore. this one on your paw? Hmm. We'll have to investigate this later. There's something going on with his foot. I don't know. Anyway, so this is the crossing guard wrap and I encourage you to try it if you are a rider or if you've had, you know, a hard day lifting or carrying or moving or cleaning or gardening and you want to just feel your body come into a more correct alignment with your head your ears should be in line with your shoulders, your shoulders should be in line with your hips, and your hips should be in line with your heels, uh, standing or sitting on a horse. So this is a good wrap to try. And we will be back tomorrow at 925 for another episode of Conversations with a Corgi, where we'll be looking at a couple of more wraps, and maybe we'll be outside. I'm scared to go in my yard, honestly. The ticks are so bad. And we also have um, pollen everywhere. I have wrapped in my mic. So this is Sally Morgan and Tristan Corgi for another episode of Conversations with a Corgi where today we looked at the crossing guard wrap, which is a good wrap to use to give you proprioception, improve your balance because it's keeping your alignment better, uh, improve your posture, release tension in your neck, upper back, shoulders, and low back and pelvis. And also you can add another wrap around your hips with this um, if you're walking and that feels really good and it helps keep that pelvis tipped under you where it should be. So try the crossing guard wrap. Let me know how you like it. We're going to try to stay away from the ticks <laughs> and have a great day everybody. Bye-bye.
Have a great day. Enjoy the sunshine on the East Coast. We haven't been getting much of it.